In Dreamweaver CS5, we, we tried to take a lot of the workflows that either existed in Dreamweaver already or we introduced in Dreamweaver CS4 and just continue making them more relevant to the way designers are working today. Uh, we've got a number of features uh, specifically geared around CSS visualization. I'd like to start by showing you CSS inspect mode. Uh, a lot of people tend to click around CSS in their, in their live view page or their design view page, um, take a look at the rules and selectors, but it gets really tedious, so we created the new inspect mode. By turning on inspect mode, now we can very simply turn on live view. Um, I'm going to go ahead and close this, and we've, we're now in a WebKit rendered version of the page, but you'll see as I drag over certain sections, they're highlighted, but we also get a little bit of color coding along with them. Blue is, of course, the box element we're looking at, but some areas, for example, down here below, um, we can see as I hover over these, um, we get purple borders showing us the borders and, and yellow showing us padding. So we can actually see how the box model is, is visualizing and rendering itself right here on the page. This gives us a lot more, uh, more accurate ways of looking at the way the CSS is actually affecting our design regions and lets us work with it a lot quickly. Now, all I have to do is click on this, and you can see that as I've been rolling over, uh, and now that I've clicked, it's actually frozen that one state over here in the CSS rules panel. Uh, so I can start I can start playing around with it and making changes. Um, again, all we need to do is turn on inspect mode and just hover over various regions of the page, and you get this really great CSS box model visualization while the CSS styles panel is updating in real time. So it's really easy to find those styles and rules you need to make a change quickly. Uh, now, along with visualization, uh, we wanted to make sure that you could experiment with your rules a little bit more than usual. Um, so let's just go ahead and click on one of these here, and I'll hop over to the CSS Styles panel to show you how this works. Um, in order to experiment, you sometimes want to create a bunch of extra styles. You might want to create a bunch of different styles, slightly different one, and sort of toggle between them. Uh, this usually meant you were hopping over to code and making a bunch of changes. But now, all you need to do is hover your, hover your cursor over in the sort of right-hand side of the of the of the uh, selection window here in the CSS panel, and you get the little uh, no, no window by closing one of these down. For example, let's turn off the right padding. We can very quickly make a change. Uh, and as you can see down here, we just lost that white right padding, and it's updated in real time. So we can see exactly how sort of pulling these styles in and out will affect our design. And as you can see with CSS inspect, with CSS inspect mode on, we can see how the box model is affected too. Uh, by adding that right padding back there, we get that nice little purple border, and we can see exactly what's happening on our page, even if those borders and margins are invisible. Really handy way to work. Uh, now, this is a static page. This is a home page, but we also have some dynamic sections of the page. And when you have e either a dynamic application or a, a hybrid site like this, quite often you need to test things by sort of seeing the way the links work between you know, the static and dynamic sites. You might even need to sort of click into a dynamic application and work. So we added a new feature called uh, Live View Navigation Mode. Um, I'm just going to scroll up to the top of the page here again, and we've got this local voice link over on the right that links to a blog framework. Uh, by holding down a modifier key, uh, I can turn Dreamweaver into a little pseudo browser. Let's go ahead and click that, and we've now loaded the blog page directly from my local testing server. So I can actually see sort of how these navigation links work out. I, I could even interact with this page and continue to work. Um, now, this is really handy for when you're working you know, sort of back and forth and checking links, but it's even more handy when you're working specifically with an application. So I'm going to turn off Live View, and let's just hop over to the blog page itself and see how this feature will really shine when you're working on a dynamic application. So here we are. We're um, looking at the WordPress home page, which isn't particularly uh, verbose or, or easy to see because it's, it requires a PHP server. But again, turning on Live View will let us immediately go to my testing server build that PHP view, bring it back here, and render it just like a real browser. Now the trick is, once I've got this in Dreamweaver, now I can actually interact with this blog framework, in this case WordPress, very naturally right within Dreamweaver, uh, Dreamweaver's live view. Um, again, if I wanted to come in and sort of see the way a post page would look as opposed to the home page, all I have to do is just hold down that modifier key, click the link, and we can jump right to a post detail page. This lets designers be really effective with every aspect of a dynamic ap application they're building. Uh, in previous versions of Dreamweaver, you really only got to see that first version of the page, but now you can actually click around. You can drive your application into real design states that you can then work around. At this point, we could very simply just start turning on inspect mode and working directly with our page at any point. This is a really handy feature and allows you to work with applications in ways that just previously weren't possible in Dreamweaver, or for that matter, any other authoring application. So now that we're in the dynamic realm, uh, we should probably talk about some of the features of Dreamweaver CS5 that are specifically geared towards dynamic applications, and particularly blog frameworks. 
Um, first and foremost, dynamic related files. As you can see over here on the left, we've got our blog rendering. Uh, I'm going to click back and go back to the home page of our blog again here. But that home page really is just a, a define statement or require statement that brings in a whole bunch of code in the back end that we don't have access to uh, unless it's run off the server. By turning on live code, we can actually render that into the real markup that the browser is seeing. But uh, we want to get to all those assets. There's a lot of related files. There's a lot of assets that are brought in after the fact. And we just need to find those. So let's go ahead and click the new feature here, Discover. And this turns on a new feature, Dynamic Related Files. What this is going to do is it's going to go and sort of troll through our code and find all those references to all the include files and assets that you know, those PHP files that we're bringing in. And as you can see, we've now got that related files bar is incredibly stretched. In fact, we can scroll for quite a while here uh, to get to all these include files. Now, if you're an engineer, this is really handy. You've now got access to all those PHP files that you're after. But if you're, a, if you're just a designer, you might not want to see all of these files right away. You might want to get to just the ones that are important, like, say, the style sheets. In that case, it's really easy just to go ahead and turn off some of the files you don't want, for example, JavaScript, PHP, and XML, and we're left with just those two style sheets that populate the entire page. Pretty handy. Um, my favorite is if we want to work on a specific type of file, we can also enter a custom filter. I can just simply say, for example, star, um, you know, wp-star.php. And we get just those WordPress config files here. So we've created a custom filter just to show us exactly what, one, what we want in the related files bar. So even if your application has you know, either two included files or 200, this gives you a really easy way to get to them quickly, navigate your, your assets fast, and actually make some, some meaningful work uh, on, your, on your blog frameworks. Uh, along with that, we've, we've done a lot to, you can see how the combination of both these dynamic features as well as the CSS features are really helping you kind of take your static design skills and apply those to dynamic applications as easily as a static HTML page.